NASA's plan is that before sending humans to Mars, a base will be built on the moon so that the process of reaching Mars becomes shorter. SpaceX founder Elon Musk wants to win the race to go to Mars. Apart from this, European and Russian space agencies also talk about sending humans to Mars, but after landing in the harsh atmosphere of Mars, how will humans survive there because unlike the land, oxygen, the biggest need for life, is not present in Mars? NASA has decided to make oxygen on Mars. The method has been found, and the way the International Space Station produces oxygen, and why the method will not be able to work on Mars. There are many reasons behind the desire of humans to live on Mars, including scientific exploration. And there is definitely a factor of space curiosity, but amidst these desires there is also a compulsion or fear that due to some disaster on the Earth, the human race might get wiped out, as happened with the extinction of dinosaurs from our world 650 million years ago. It was eliminated and it is also possible, an example of which we are seeing in the face of climate change on Earth. This is perhaps the biggest reason that in the future, someone will become Neil Armstrong of Mars. On one hand, Musk has first planned to go to Mars in 2026, had intended to colonize Earth, but now their own prediction of 2029. You've slightly put back the expected date to put the first human on Mars till 2029, I want to say. Um, yeah, I mean, so, so. Uh, let's see, I mean, we, we are, we have built a production system for Starship, so we're, we're, we're making a lot of ships and boosters. But the other side has also intended to land humans on Mars by 2030, but the question is not who will go to Mars first, the question is that how will humans be able to survive after going to Mars? Of course, Mars has many properties. As a day on Mars, which is also called Martian Day or Sol, its length is only 39 minutes more than the day on Earth. There is also a different weather there, and on the Earth, apart from this, it is also on the poles of the Earth. There are ice caps, and there is an atmosphere on the poles of Mars as well as on the Earth, whereas there is an atmosphere on Mars, although it is thin, but one thing which is completely insufficient for humans to live on Mars is oxygen. So how is this oxygen gas created on Mars? That too, not just for one or two people, but to populate an entire colony of Mars. If we talk about keeping humans alive in extreme situations, the first thing that comes to mind is the ISS, that is International Space Station. Today, it is in the harsh conditions of space. 25 years have passed until now it is continuously providing oxygen and fresh water to humans. Four to five astronauts are always present in the International Space Station, whose daily requirement of water is at least 45 liters, that is 1,350 liters per month, and 16,200 liters per year. Apart from this, 1,000 kilos of oxygen gas is used annually on the ISS. How is this much water and oxygen created in space 400 kilometer away from Earth? For this purpose, two systems are installed in the ISS. One is the Water Reclamation System, RS, and the second one is Oxygen Generation System, that is OGS. To understand why we cannot install both these systems on Mars, we first need to know how these systems work. Water reclamation system collects water from human waste that is urine, sweat, and humidity, and then cleans it and makes it drinkable again. Astronaut Douglas V. Locke once said that our yesterday's coffee makes the next day's coffee. The WRS system purifies the water already present in the ISS and makes it again, makes it suitable for use and thus avoids the wastage of water on the 98%. Its equivalent is the oxygen generation system. This system takes a little water from the RS and then passes it through a special process to generate oxygen for breathing. This is a simple process that we had studied in class five, which is called electrolysis. Electrical current is passed through water due to which water gets converted into oxygen gas and hydrogen gas. Oxygen gas is used for breathing, but hydrogen is a very useful process. It is a dangerous and inflammable gas which can burn the entire ISS in seconds and form a fireball. This hydrogen gas is not wasted, but is put into another system, which is called Satyan system. This system converts the waste carbon dioxide of the astronauts present in the ISS. By collecting and mixing it with hydrogen gas, water from it is methane gas and a little gas. The water is reused and put into the gas management system, but methane gas, which is very important on Earth, is sent out of the ISS to space. Methane gas is released in the ISS, which is also a kind of fuel. Energy and heat can also be generated from it, but it is wasted because oxygen is needed to burn it and there is only oxygen on the ISS. 
The most valuable thing is that if we look at the entire oxygen and water process of ISS, then it depends on refueling missions, because of course they are efficient at 98%, but still there are losses and leakages in every system. That is why, after every six months or year, water and oxygen are brought from the ground and injected into the ISS. These refueling missions are very costly, in which the cost of transporting just one liter of water 400 kilometers above the ISS is more than 80 million. Making oxygen in this manner on distant Mars is not cost effective in any way. For this, a system will have to be made which will use the resources present on Mars itself and make oxygen from it. NASA's Perseverance rover, which was sent to Mars in 2021, will have it. For this experiment, a device was installed which has been named MOXIE, that is Mars Oxygen in Situ Experiment because the source of water in ISS is refueling, but to find water on Mars, one will have to go to its polar caps or several feet below. Ice will have to be extracted by drilling. That is why MOXIE creates oxygen by using carbon dioxide from the atmosphere of Mars itself. How to explain it in simple words? Mars' atmosphere has 95% carbon dioxide. MOXIE pumps carbon dioxide from the outside atmosphere. It is pressurized and then it is put in an electrolyzer and heated to a temperature of 800 degrees Celsius due to which oxygen gas is separated from carbon dioxide. This electrolyzer is made of gold because gold is an excellent heat conductor which purges the difference, protects other parts of the body from heat. In this process, along with oxygen gas, carbon monoxide is also produced from carbon dioxide. Its disadvantage is that if the carbon gets completely separated in this process, it can also form a layer of carbon. As seen at the bottom of the cooking pan, this layer will not take long to damage the pancreas. That is why this process is performed with great caution. But how much oxygen does MOXIE produce at one time on Mars? MOXIE requires a lot of energy. That is why NASA runs it only occasionally when there is energy left from the solar panel. Till now it has produced only 122 grams of oxygen, which can keep a person alive only for 3.5 hours. If we have to produce more oxygen on Mars through the system, then for that we will need a bigger version of MOXIE and also a bigger power plant to run it. And this is the biggest challenge till now. Now the thing to understand here is that MOXIE first, it compresses the carbon dioxide with the help of a compressor and then heats it at 800 degrees Celsius. Both these processes require a lot of energy. To solve this issue, scientists are working on a future technology in which the molecules of carbon dioxide, it can be broken only at low temperatures. Oxygen molecules will be separated from it, not by heating the carbon dioxide, but by creating vibration inside it. At present, this technology has been tested in the lab, but due to the high atmospheric pressure and temperature of the Earth. It is not possible to do this experiment on Earth, but the atmosphere of Mars is absolutely perfect for this work. Whatever may be the technology, our target is that we have to make oxygen on Mars by using only such things which are present there and which devices. They will also not have any dependency on Earth because the ISS is only 400 km away from the ground. If the oxygen generation system there gets damaged, then sending the astronauts back to Earth is not such a big issue. They can wear their emergency suits and refuel for a few hours, wait and can also go back to Earth. But if there is any issue in the oxygen generation machine after colonization on Mars, then there will be no option of refueling, nor will it be so easy to go back to Earth. Hopefully this video of daily learning facts you guys will also like and share a lot. Thank you very much for your loving comments. See you in the next great video.